Hello again, welcome back to another video. We're looking for a affordable, small, compact point and shoot. May I recommend one of these? And this is a little carrying bag with it. Just move that out of the way. This is a Minolta Hymatic G, launched in 1974. This is the last of the sort of metal bodied Hymatics. After this, they sort of got autofocus and a lot more plasticky in their construction. I give the Kanika cap on the front, but uh, there's a reason for the cap related to the metering. The metering's always on, so if you don't want to run down your battery, it also shows the camera's been looked after. This one also has a, uh, a filter attached to the front of the lens, which is another sign that the camera's been looked after quite well. It's in pretty good condition, actually. Automatic exposure. It's got some sort of weird program mode. That's all that's available is auto. In manual, it works on the uh, the guide number system for the flash gun. This is obviously 1974 technology. Very light, very small, easily pocketable. Uh, 35mm. Point and shoot, really. You do have a choice of focusing zones here on the front. You've got sort of infinity, a group of people, head and shoulders and top of the torso, or well, that is just purely head and shoulders. But handily, there is a distance scale which shows you on here in feet and meters. So the closest is one meter or 3.3 feet. And you can adjust this in between settings as well. So you can choose your distances that you want it to focus. Shutter speeds range from a 30th of a second to a 640th, which is a bit of an odd combination. And the aperture range is 2.8 down to f14, which again seems a bit strange. There's the cell for the, uh, the light meter. So if you attach a filter, it will apply compensation automatically. Quite common back in the day to do that. To set the film speed, you can see it's set for 400. You turn this dial, I can't remember which way it goes, but yeah, it's dial to set the speed range. 400 is where it tops out. And it goes all the way down to, I think, 25, I think was the lowest, 40. And yeah, 25. So you set your film speed, your ISO, down on the bottom. And once it's set, you can kind of forget it. But yeah, just a simple point and shoot. There is um, indication in the viewfinder where the actual uh, sort of area in the picture is that's going to come out. And it does have a bit of parallax correction in there as well, depending on the focus distance. Quite nice finish, I think. It's uh, quite a nice looking camera. So it's small, it's light. Powered by mercury cells uh, when it was new. Um, the hearing aid wean cell is quite a good alternative, although it won't last quite as long um, as the mercury cells. But if you're planning on using ones, they're cheap enough to buy. Stick one of those in there. It only takes the one battery, plus facing out towards the bottom cover. Tripod mount, a bit plasticky, so that could get chewed up. So you need to be careful if you're going to use it on a tripod. And also about marking the base as well. Uh, push to rewind the film when you're finished. So you just push this up and it stays in. And you can just rewind the film. Controls are very simple. There's there's no frills on it at all. There's no self timer, for example. There's no long shutter speeds, although it is threaded for a cable release, which seems a little bit weird. Uh, frame counter window on this side. Film advance is here. Shutter release is here. It's very quiet. It's got a cold shoe on the top, a fold out crank for rewinding. This also pulls up to open the back. You can see the insides. So you've got the pressure plate, multi sprocket take up spool, advance. You can see quite clearly it's a leaf shutter. Mm. It needs to have the, uh, the foam replaced. These foam light seals need to be replaced. There should be one along here as well that's uh, fell out earlier when I was looking at it. It's a good clean out as well, actually. It's dirty in there. Residue of old foam that's deteriorating. 
eyepiece that you look through and I believe underneath here if I can see to get this out the nails you've got a flash uh, connection for a flash gun there quite nice that it's still got the cover so it shows it's been uh, either quite well looked after or uh, just thrown in a cupboard and forgotten about no corrosion in the battery compartment but that's something you would need to check um, you can find these they are very very affordable um, this was I think 12 15 pounds something like that it wasn't expensive but yeah just a nice little carry around point and shoot very basic not too much to go wrong just make sure that the shutters uh, shutter is free and it does actually fire you can tell if it's working by just covering this up it should give you a slower speed there is an indication in the viewfinder i don't know if you can see that but there is a scale on that side um, it shows you the combination of shutter speeds and apertures that it's selected so you can be wary of things like camera shake although this lens is a 38 mil 2.8 so camera shake shouldn't really be an issue with this it hasn't got a great big mirror flapping about but yeah nice simple little camera great just to carry around with you and just uh, point and shoot as the name implies and like i said i like this scale on it as well rather than just the symbols so you can figure out exactly uh, where your uh, where your focus point is going to be sharp lens minolta quality there's some debate about whether minolta actually made these or not i'm not sure very similar to a lot of other cameras of the era hugely popular Let's see if i can load it just to show you how it loads it's pretty standard like all 35 mil cameras you take your film this is my test film a sample film you stick it in there Pull the leader across, foam everywhere, look. Um, I've had to cut this leader myself, it's not a factory cut leader. Which way does that turn when it goes around? Goes that way. Should be fairly easy to load them. Once it's got hold of the sprockets. And close the back you'll see that the frame counter resets when you open the back so you just continue to advance just make sure that this is rewound so that it should turn shows the film's being pulled out as you're using it so then just yep yeah, just advance it till you get to the first frame usually two or three that's probably about enough and they are ready to go set the speed this is a 400 film but i'm not going to run it through the camera i'm going to do the light seals before i try using it but yeah highly recommended affordable the camera is probably going to cost you less than the first roll of film plus processing to be honest but yeah handy small quite cute i think it's not intimidating it's not like a big black dslr in someone's face uh, Probably quite good for street photography. Very popular. Um, any videos I've done on the Hymatics have been highly popular. This is my third Hymatic now, so uh, I'm gradually getting them all. But yeah, that's it for today, folks. Thank you very much for watching. Hope you've enjoyed. Comments, questions, queries down below. If you use one of these, drop me a comment just to uh, give me your thoughts on them. And uh, yeah, I look forward to seeing you in the next one. Please don't forget to like and subscribe and all that usual rubbish. And uh, I look forward to seeing the next one. Take care. Bye.